cold that I had and got rid of is absolutely destroying me on its way out. Last night, I completely lost my voice, and today it's mostly recovered, so I apologize for the raspy sound, but also if this review ends up being shorter than normal because I don't know how long this is going to last. Megan is directed by Gerard Johnstone, who made Housebound, a movie I love that nobody talks about that is so good, and I wondered why it took him so long to make another movie. I don't have an answer for that, but I'm really glad to see him helming another movie that I got to see in the theaters. When Gemma suddenly becomes the caretaker of her orphaned eight-year-old niece, Gemma's unsure and unprepared to be a parent. Under intense pressure at work, she decides to pair her Megan prototype with Katie in an attempt to resolve both problems, a decision that will have unimaginable consequences. There are a ton of movies about AI that's run amok or a child's toy that turns out to be evil like Chucky or Annabelle. This isn't exactly anything new. And when you pair that with the fact that it's being released during the first weekend in January, which is historically where Hollywood studios dump their garbage that they want everyone to forget about, this film has an uphill battle. But it's also blessed with being a really good surprise because nobody expects the killer AI doll movie that comes out the first weekend of January to be any good, and it is. Right from the opening scene, which is a very funny kid's toy commercial, the movie lets you know you're gonna be in for some laughs. And if you've seen the trailers, you know that inevitably Megan is going to do some very bad things, and sometimes in a very funny way, like dancing in a hallway, which has become really popular. But what works about the movie so well, and I think what surprised me so much about it, is the exploration of death and mortality from the eyes of a small girl who is faced immediately with that when her parents are killed, and then is taught that by an evil robotic doll, but also the exploration of how children can become so attached to an electronic item that they lose touch with reality. And I think this movie has a lot more to say about those things than I expected it to from the trailers. The Blumhouse name and the look of the marketing seems to suggest that this is going to be like a Chucky movie or an Annabelle movie, except a little different. And uh, I guess you could say that if you didn't pay attention to the movie at all, but there's a lot of stuff going on under the surface that Akilah Cooper's very good screenplay explores, especially in the dynamic between Allison Williams' character and the young girl in that she's not prepared to be a mother. She doesn't know how to be a mother. She doesn't have a, a home that's ready for it. There are collectibles everywhere. There's dangerous items everywhere. And she has a very busy career. And so the film actually took a considerable amount of time to set up its characters in a believable way and also have a killer AI doll. Which I have to talk about Megan herself, of course. I'm not exactly sure how they did it. I know that some actors were puppeteers. I don't know how much of that was handled by prosthetics and CGI because it is very seamless. The creation of Megan as a character is really impressive, which is to say that the film looks more expensive than I think it was. I think Gerard Johnstone did a very, very good job directing this movie. And it is also pretty funny, especially in the way it explores the corporate world of marketing toys to children. There's a little bit more of that than I expected, maybe just a little bit too much, of the corporate side of things, but it's kind of needed to understand the pressure that Allison Williams has at her job and how that affects her home life now that it's completely in turmoil. Look, as far as January movies and first movies of the year, this is easily one of the better ones that I can remember over the past 13 years that I've been making videos on this channel. And I also really like the fact that it is a horror comedy because those don't really get made that much anymore. With Renfield coming out, I'm really hoping that that starts to change. It's been very difficult to try to pitch horror comedies or get them made because people don't know exactly what comedies are anymore and people want to be serious. They don't know if it's profitable or if it should just go straight to streaming. So I'm glad that this movie is in theaters and will probably do fairly well financially based on the amount of people that were there when I saw it. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to more videos very soon. Hopefully by the next one, I sound a little better. As always, guys, you're the best. Thank you so much. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.